Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, and whatever the hell the Truman Show says. Welcome back to another exciting episode of your favorite nerdy podcast, coming in hot on Screen Crush's uh, tales, because why not? Sure. <laughs> We're in a new age. Um, welcome back to Shut Up and Enjoy. This week we are going to be reviewing the and breaking down a little bit the trailer, the first public, full public viewing of Captain America 4, uh, Brave New World. Just had to look over off screen because I forgot what it was called. <laughs> <laughs> um, as usual. It's um, gone through a few name changes, so. Well, yeah. yeah, so same with Agatha, too, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, as usual, I am, are you there, Tiamat? It's me, President Ross. <laughs> I'm my, as always, infallible co-host, Lieutenant Trouble. He is. Hello. So, quick synopsis, and then we will jump into uh, giving it a little viewy view. Um, and, uh, yeah. Lieutenant all right. Trouble, it's all yours. Captain America, New World Order. Or Brave New World. <laughs> One of them. Sam Wilson finds himself at the center of an international incident and must work to stop the true brains behind it. That's it. That's all you got. One That's little sequence got. blurb. That's it. So let's let's just dig into this trailer and see what we spot, what we theorize, what we think is going to happen. And oh my God, the geopolitical climate of the MCU is just B-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-S. Yes. So, without further ado, let me do this, do that, click share, and go. Wilson. Thanks for coming in. I thank you for the invite, sir. I have to admit, I'm still getting used to the new look. They said to lose the mustache or lose the election. You and I haven't always agreed in the past. But I want to make another run at making Captain America an official military position. And if we disagree on how to manage this situation, then what happens? Work with me, Sam. We'll show the world a better way forward. Sir, your inner circle has been compromised. Either you can't see that, or you don't want to. What if it's a trap? Global power is shifting. You're just a pawn. You may be Captain America, but you're not Steve Rogers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So immediate takeaways, immediate thoughts. Go. Immediate thought is that it looks like it's going to be extremely grounded, a grounded movie in the MCU, which we have. It's been a long time since we've seen one of those that is truly gritty down into it. A lot of geopolitical shenanigans going on. And I'm looking forward to this one. 100%. Oh yes, it's it definitely brings it more back to earth than aliens and uh, extra like extraterrestrial causes from Thanos to like the mystic arts and stuff. You're you're right. It it is a lot more grounded, which I'm looking forward to. It makes it almost a little more plausible. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, and I mean, despite steroid Red Hulk, but whatever. But <laughs> so. It opens up with Sam coming into the White House to talk to no longer William Hurt, but President Harrison Ford Deanna Jones Solo Ross. <laughs> um, 
this was one casting that people had right when William Hurt passed away. Mm -hmm. It was almost immediately fan cast to be Harrison Ford. Right. Some people called for uh, the original Ross, uh, Sam um, blanking on his last name, but the one who was in um, the original Hulk movie before William Hurt took it over. I had not heard that, but I am not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Um, Yeah, so Harrison Ford uh, assumed the role. So he is in MCU. He is canon. He is awesome. Give me more Harrison Ford. Absolutely. Um, So now General Ross was the one who hunted Hulk, gave Blonsky the super soldier knockoff serum to make Mm -hmm. an abomination which we see in she hulk he's also the one in the start of infinity war who roadie is talking to as uh sam and wanda and vision who was just stabbed by thanos's goons and uh captain america walk through the door at the avengers compound Mm -hmm. talking to them 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 there he is the one who introduces them to the Sarkovia Accords in Civil War after the incident in Liberia. I, I want to say Lagos, but Lagos, yes, yes, yes. Um, which is then stemmed off of the what happened in Age of Ultron with Sarkovia, you know, bubbling up and then falling and crashing. <laughs> <laughs> Minor things that a country does. Or city. Um, So Ross has been in and around the MCU, kind of plaguing the Avengers, and now he's trying to, it looks like he's trying to mend some ties, definitely for political gain, um, to bring Captain America back into the popular spotlight and the affirmative vote of the American people, which... I mean, Steve Rogers was, he was the Boy Scout. He was America's hero. Um, And now with Sam Wilson and what we saw with his character development in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, there's a lot that goes with that. Right. Um, How much do we think that that history is going to play into it? Do we think that's going to be a point of antagonization? (laughs) I think it's going to play an important part Part, just because of what Sam brought up at the end of his series when he talked about how America wouldn't be accepting to a black Captain America. And then we also see uh, Isaiah Bradley in this trailer where he's taking a shot at the president. So I'm, I'm thinking all of that is going to play hand in hand into what's going on. Um, there's definitely going to be some some mention to the super soldier serum because Isaiah Bradley obviously took that, whereas Sam didn't want to take it in his series. So um, are we going to see an opportunity for him to take it? I mean, he's going to need something to go up against Red Hawk. Um, Or are we going to see someone else come in to try and deal with Red Hawk? So it's um, a lot of questions are arising just from this little teaser trailer. It wasn't even a full trailer. It was just a teaser. Um, And I've seen which. I've seen some rumors about who might come and deal with Red Hulk. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you know, it'll be a rough landing. Oh, but I'm <laughs> um, so I've, seen, I've seen that rumor skating about. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll see. Although maybe there's also definitely been confirmed sightings of uh, Arwen on, uh, I mean, Liv Tyler. <laughs> yes that's right yes. you have to still watch lord of the rings uh, yes there is well I, I watched those movies it's just been a long time um, uh, at the funeral scene is what she was yes yes or whether yes. that is a steve rogers burying an empty casket funeral or if it is ross because we see the white house blow up in this so right what what is that? Uh, Washington Down or Olympus Down? Was that movie with uh, Gerard Butler or something? Yep, yep. Um, it again, it's it it could be anything, and that's the beauty of trailers, 
Um, that's also the beauty of, unfortunately, we get those leaks and pictures and things that shouldn't come out. We shouldn't know too, too much about uh, movies and whatnot, but it also gets you thinking of what could possibly happen. Um, when we think about those things, though, when when we get the wheels turning and look forward to seeing the movie, we, we kind of need to take a step back and not not make it too uh expectational so you know tone down expectations on what we're going to see and just enjoy it you know because it could possibly just be her in for that one scene of whatever's happening at this funeral you know and it could be anyone now what do, what do we think the motives are and yes we're getting to theorizing territory but we're having fun with it oh yes motives for ross becoming the red hulk and at what point do we think he actually becomes Red Hulk? Has it been years or is this something that happens in this movie? And, and the film, that... I think things are leading towards it happening in this film. Simply because if it had happened previous to this, we probably would have seen something. Of course, they could always do flashbacks. Um, to kind of fill in the blanks there. But I think all things are leading towards it. Uh, we see Isaiah Bradley, who is some sort of a Manchurian candidate where, you know, he's taking control of and he's trying to take out the president. Maybe that's the point at which President Ross is now thinking, okay, listen, I got to do something to protect myself from these superpowered individuals. Oh yeah, that's right. I did have at one point a super soldier knockoff serum that I gave to Blonsky. Maybe I'll try to, and he didn't die. Maybe I'll try to bring that back and, and to see about something. Um, there's also, for those of us that watched she Hulk and didn't give up on it way too early. They did in fact, get a sample of her blood. So that could also play a role into it. So again, it's a lot, it's a lot that could be in this film that could bring a lot of the the connective tissue and some of the previous properties all together and and make for a delightful film oh yes, <laughs> yes. Right. um so a few things with that um i do see the the retired soldier wanting to stay in the fight Mm -hmm. um so i could see why he might want to beef himself up a little bit and give him that protection we also see if you think back to civil war when he's talking to all the avengers in stark tower and introducing the sarkovia accords he talks about like a backswing and he has a heart attack yes so there are pre-existing health conditions that may cause him to something's coming back it's another heart attack from stress of the job it's a stroke or the oval office fell on him and this is the mm -hmm. only way to save the president like it could be as innocuous as that right right could be anything um one thing that we do see one callback from god at this point what 17 years ago was the hulk uh he... hmm I think that one was in 2004 and then one was in 2008, I believe. Something like that. Yeah. Let's let's take a look. That's why we have the Google. It is. While we're looking that up, though, we do see Mr. Blue come back. Uh, Sam Stearns, as you saw in the subtitles there. So he was the guy when Bruce um, or not. Was he working with Bruce or in the lab or was he in the I think presence? He was working Blonsky... on Bruce trying to get, he was doing, he was running his own experiments. Yes. And that film was in 2003, by the way, the original Hulk. Oh, God. So 19 years ago. Yeah. It was in 2000. Oh, 21 no. Years ago. 21 years ago. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> and then the second, yeah, the second one was in 2008, which was the second uh, MCU film. after yes. Iron Man. Um, so we see Sam Stearns coming back um, as Mr. Blue, who is kind of acting as a bit of a point of 
plot forwarding for Bruce, I guess, in his journey and keeping him connected. Um, in the comics, he does have like a little mutated green head and stuff. And there's that right. one scene when he's talking about the geopolitical point of view of like, now we're at the turning of the tide. You see that green under the hat. Yes. So I love that they're bringing him back. I love that callback to pre MCU. Um, hmm. Chef's kiss. <laughs> right. Chef's kiss <laughs> on that one. Um, I mean, the the big, big thing, aside from Isaiah coming back and still clearly being brainwashed, mm-hmm. um, we also see Falcon, Miss yes. Falcon, uh, Joaquin Torres, name, Joaquin Torres, mm-hmm. coming back, see him in a few scenes. But we're now dealing with Tiamat. The- yes. Eternal, who was supposed to be hatching out of the Earth's core, but then the Eternals were like, hold up. Now chill, bruh. People are different. They single-handedly stopped Thanos and brought uh, the human race back and everything Mm -hmm. back. Um, Big out there theory, and do I want this to happen? Yes. Am I going to be disappointed if they're going another route? Not necessarily, no. Um, Okay. But shouting out new rock stars who are theorizing with this, and I'm theorizing, it's, we also see a lot of influence of, like, the 51st Fleet, and we see some Japanese diplomats and everything. So, and there is a line of, like, recovered from japan like a japan facility or something there was that line in the trailer as well i'm thinking that this is how adamantium comes in that makes sense it's another vibranium came from space maybe adamantium came from the eternal gods as a way to help human development and that's why it's now we're seeing it in the resurgence of or the emergence with Tiamat because there could be ore of adamantium there. And this is what everyone is fighting over. Right. I mean, it could it could it. possibly I'm sorry, it could possibly just be that is what's inside of an inter an eternal. We did see the Eternals being mined or uh space. Was it an eternal in Guardians of the Galaxy when they were mining? Oh, nowhere, yeah, yeah. When when they were mining, so they were mining the possible mining the bone marrow or something. Yeah, so it's it's strongly possible that that is just something that is inherent to the um, uh, gosh, not Eternals. Um, the hell is Tiamat? Celestial. Yeah. Celestial. There I was using go. Eternals wrong earlier. <laughs> Celestial. Uh, so that could be something that is just inherent into them that some industrious human can repurpose for nefarious things. And then the <laughs> the trailer poster alone, we see Hulk's hand, Red Hulk's hand grabbing around the shield. It's bending that shield. Yes, it is. So we've seen several times now that vibranium, as strong and versatile as it is, is not indestructible. Right. Adamantium, on the other hand, we're seeing much more of. Um, Now with Wolverine and Deadpool coming out. Ten days away, by the way. Next week. Yeah. (laughs) um, By the way, I didn't fuck that up, so I will be seeing it on Thursday. Very so, good. Noted. Um, right. <clears throat> yeah, so as we're seeing more and more of that coming in and bringing in mutants, like with Miss Marvel and everything, mm-hmm. we're, we're inching closer to that. What I want to know, that dirty little secret, is are they bringing Tiamat into this because it fits and this was their plan or are they bringing Tiamat into it because everyone was like hey 
No one has said fuck all about this giant thing. And if you're making this big of a deal of the Sarkovia Accords, you should say something. And so they kind of, whether this was a mountain in the Alps that they were fighting over adamantium that they just then transposed into um, like Tiamat Island. I am a firm believer in this cinematic universe and it being things done being things being done for a reason there was a reason that they left Tiamat sticking out of the was Indian Ocean with a half a head and a hand there was a reason why they did it. They could have done anything. We saw all through that Eternals film, and we're going to just jump into that real quick. We saw all through that film that she was able to turn items into anything she wanted. Butterflies, leaves, flowers, just could have could have flown away. And with, with the power that, that they all had combined together, she probably could have did the same thing with Tiamat. And it didn't have to stay as a rock form outcrop in the middle of the ocean that i mean because at that point you don't even know if i mean hell if i leave it there if i leave it a part of the earth will it at some point regain consciousness or what have you and end up destroying the earth we don't know she doesn't know so at that point it would be the best option would be to get rid of it as best as best possible so just thinking as a as a, I'm, I'm thinking like a filmmaker and someone who is a part of this cinematic universe and who would keep it going, there has to be a reason why we left this dangling thread. Sure, sure, sure. Everyone's all, hey, we're three years later, four years later, and it still hasn't come up aside from the one little blurb and I believe She-Hulk where it was off to the side of a website or something. We've talked before about how I feel about, you know, each story is its own thing. It doesn't have to reference that, even though that thing is still going on. Uh, something really wild happened here a couple days ago. We're not going to talk about it on this podcast, right? But it happened. So it's it's that same kind of thing, you know, in a, in a microcosm of how movies and how things work, how this cinematic universe works not everybody talks about everything you know um the avengers did not show up for t'challa's funeral <laughs> it's a thing it just happens you know there's no reason why it doesn't have to be a reason why it doesn't need to be explained so uh, saying all that to say now jumping back into this saying all that to say that um i think it was all a plan they knew what they were doing and now these this is this these are all the fruits of of our of our patience of our waiting to see what happens and and we don't even know that could be the very beginning of the film and never come up again we don't know <laughs> you're right you're right you're right you're right <laughs> um i was we won't stay on this for too long but i was talking to my brother the other day um mm -hmm. And he mentioned one thing that James Gunn is doing very well with his marketing of his DC universe is he will get out on Twitter and just be like, nah, not happening. And he will he will shut down rumors and drop little bits and pieces like that. Mm hmm. Do you think Marvel should start doing that when people are like, Tiamat, where's Tiamat Island? It's been three years. No one said anything. And just have Kevin Foggy be like, we haven't forgotten. And that's it. Nope. Can't win. Because no matter how much he does that, they will show a behind the scenes photo of his characters in a costume. And you'll get all the bullshit about how these costumes are the worst costumes and they're CW style and they don't match what the comic book does. So it, it's a no win situation. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, people are going to have their opinions. They're going to think you're lying and you're bullshitting. So it, it doesn't, if that's not 
that that that's always been in his character to do, even before he was the head of DC. Yeah. So he's just continuing okay. along. He off road guardians and everything. Right. So he's just continuing along with what he does, and that's who he is. It also got him in trouble a couple of times. So <laughs> again, you got to be careful, right? So it wouldn't it wouldn't do Marvel or certain factions of Marvel to do that. So we noticed with X Men that Bo DeMeo, even though he was fired at the time, he did get on social media and hyped up hyped the hell out of that show and had discourse about the show explained some things about the show said what people need to watch and know about the show and other media comics and other um animated shows in the past and everything just to bring it all together but that is not that is not a foggy thing he doesn't typically do uh, I, I do know that he's been on some podcasts here in the last couple of weeks again because they have a new they have a new uh, Marvel MCU podcast that you guys can check out after you finish listening to ours and definitely come back drop a like um some comments so he has been getting out there recently but I think it's I think he's still going to play everything tight to the chest and and not give up too much information and not go back and forth because it 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 will definitely end up in a no win situation, especially when they come back and do the reshoots and things change and oh things my like God, that. The reshoots so, for this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I guess I guess we can get into that because Giancarlo Esposito was mm. featured prominently in this trailer. And we know he just filmed those scenes last month. Yeah. So so that that's going to be extremely interesting to see how he fits in. Now we know that he said that he's going to be starting in this film and then he's going to go on to other there films, are other projects. shows or what have you. So the, I'm really interested to see where his who his character is because it came out today that people have been guessing who he is and, as the character but He's saying no one's got it correct so far, which is interesting. But it's, it's it'll be interesting to see where he goes from here. Who is this character, and where does he go from here? Is he going to be a new a, a new series starring him, or is he just going to be popping up like Wong in different movies going forward? So you can't. First off, you can't go wrong by casting him in any freaking. Oh, absolutely! Because you know that that is going to be a spectacular <laughs> and phenomenal acted role like absolutely you don't there there's no notes right right just let him do his thing <laughs> here's the script go <laughs> so that'll be that'll be interesting to see but yes there there were there were a few re- reshoots again marvel has always built in reshoots into their properties um and i think it all goes into everything they do so they have the they have the tv side they have the Obviously, the um, Deadpool film that's coming out soon. So, was something in there that needed to be changed? They also react to, and you know, this is neither here nor there whether they really should, but they also react react to real world instances, which is what plagued Falcon and Winter Soldier. They changed the entire premise of that show and did tons of reshoots, and and, and it changed everything. Um, we don't know if it's for the better or not, so we won't get into that. But uh, reshoots are, for the most part, built into all of their properties and all of their films. Um, they started getting into, you know, how much the film costs, and it was over three hundred million dollars, and all the rumors and bullshit. Again, some of that stuff I think we should not know. I also think that people should know how much athletes get paid, but that's a whole other podcast we'll get into another time. Um, we should know how much the fucking thing costs. And if we do how mu- know how much it costs, why do we care? It's not our money. That's, that's money- something that always got to me. It's like, why do we care if this was a $10 million movie or a $200 million movie? Right. Like, we've seen great movies with no budget, and we've seen horrible movies with the biggest of big budgets. Like, right. <laughs> Clearly, history goes to show that the budget is not indicative of the quality of the final product. Exactly. Exactly. It doesn't matter. We are looking for great. We're we're looking for great 
a film that we pay our hard-earned money for and go out and enjoy ourselves as we sit down for two uh, two and a half hours. Just shut Just up. that simple. Doesn't matter how much it costs. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, one other thing. Um, she wasn't in the trailer much, just a few, few scenes, but there was a woman dressed in all white. Mm-hmm. It looks very potentially undercover Dora Milaje. Ah, and yes. So if they're thinking <laughs> of like adamantium bringing in as something to maybe defend against Vibranium from Wakanda, I could see a almost spy for Wakanda coming in, wanting to keep tabs on what the idiots in America are doing. <laughs> so I I love seeing the Dora Milaje. They are badass characters. I would give my left arm to see it. It would be great. And they did show up in the um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So, And they showed up big. Well, that. also they gave Sam that suit. Yes. That we see in the trailer mm-hmm. just a little bit. We now have a bluer than blue suit. Right. Right. So he's, again, a lot of people complain about the white suit and, oh, how's he going to turn his neck and all that other stuff. So, uh but we do see we see that we see a lot of suits. I think three or four different suits in there. Um, so it, it again, it all works out, and uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how all this goes. And uh, I'm looking, I'm just so excited looking for I'm this. Geeking for it. I'm geeking for the movie. <laughs> it's going to be a great time. Yeah, um, yeah. You can bet that we will be continuing to record more on it because as stuff evolves, especially with uh, Comic Con next mm-hmm. week. Interesting time and they dropped this trailer now and not have this be the Comic-Con release. So again, we again we know too much about things. There was a it was rumored that it was gonna be leaked anyway. So you mean in that Slack Disney Slack hack that happened today where yeah. they are alleging that they stole 1.1 terabytes of data and of messages from Disney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that leak? That yeah. one? So so there's a rumor that, that it was going to be leaked. So Disney wanted to be proactive and get it out there. I, again, we we know there's there's way too much news real or un or otherwise that uh that gets out there i think sometimes there's no thought or pre-planning to it and organizations just do things so perhaps last week and it was it came out on a weird day wasn't it like uh was it thursday or friday came out on a, on a weird day at like nine in the morning. You posted so, that on July twelfth, so fifteen Friday. Well, so Friday. it was Friday. <laughs> yeah, it was. Just, it was just incredibly weird that it. You know, they, they just dropped it, and it was again a pleasant surprise that we were all in for, and not only was it not only was it a surprise that that we all loved, we loved the feel that it gave you know it didn't give us it it it's gritty it's real it didn't seem silly or playful or anything like that it gave us the um the old uh captain america it the was a soldier vibe visually it looked a lot like civil war yeah yeah with the color shading the CGI of the shield, it looked a lot like Civil War, which is a nice callback. And then, of course, being seeing Isaiah Bradley, are we going to see more shots in Baltimore? Um, where Water. We are, are we going to see? We saw the cherry blossoms and everything in DC, which mm-hmm. is big on. Um, yeah. I like it. I yep. like it. <laughs> um, how many uh angry red uh politicians are you giving this one? Nine. Nine nine out of nine pol- angry red politicians for right. <laughs> the trailer. Um, I do 
like how they are flat out. They flat out showed us Red Hulk versus in the first Deadpool trailer. It was really a teaser of Wolverine, but I think in part, you know, McDonald's Happy Meals had Red Hulk, so we all knew we were getting Red Hulk. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So I like how they didn't sugarcoat that. They're like, all right, you know it. We know it. We know you know. You know we know you know. Here you go. Right. A stinger. And at, at the at this point, having having Harrison Ford, having Thaddeus Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt Ross in the film, we know what he turns into. <laughs> Everybody does. Yeah, we 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 know what it is. Just let it happen, you know. Um, they did they did do a a, a clever little uh, three quarter behind the back shot, so you just barely see a little bit of the face, but you don't quite see the face. So that'll be the big thing. Is is Red Hulk going to have Harrison Ford's face? And you know, there you go. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right, guys, this was, again, phenomenal, phenomenal trailer. Um, definitely looking forward to seeing more. Movie can't come soon enough. We are, like, a year out from the movie, and I yeah. want it now. This trailer, <laughs> I'm excited for it. I always, I recently have just kind of forgotten that it was happening. So this was a good reminder to get me jazzed up for it. Um Hopefully we see more in the coming months. I would imagine we'll see something in the fall for it. Mm-hmm. Usually how they do trailers, little quarterly scheduling like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then probably a Super Bowl trailer. Oh, a thousand percent. I would imagine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, awesome. Well, yeah. As this comes out on. Oh, wow. Wait a second. This comes out on February 14th. Oh, that's right. So I think the Super Bowl is going to be the Sunday before that. Yeah, I think the Super Bowl is going to be the Sunday before yeah. that. So they may not even need. I mean, they're going to have a. Well, it'll do. It'll do like they did before, and they'll do the little thirty second, and then trailer and say, online. "Hey, the full trailer is online." But at that point, we probably would have already seen the full trailer. But also. What else is coming out that they would announce? So there, the schedule, I looked at it earlier. Let me see if I can pull that up really quick. MCU upcoming movies. So Daredevil Born Again is supposed to be coming. Ironheart is supposed to be coming. Oh, Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts are in, is in May. So we might so, get a Thunderbolts trailer. Uh, yeah, 100%. And also, it still has that asterisk beside it. So is it possible that that the name could change? Based on Captain America? Yes. That would be very interesting. Because as we know, Thunderbolts are named after Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah. So, hmm. Okay. Fantastic Four is also next year, too. Yes. Yeah. So quite a few, quite a few films. It was also supposed to be Blade, but you know how that goes. We won't even get into that on this. We could go forever on that. Yeah. 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 So we got a lot coming down. And lots to be yes, excited sir. for. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah, as usual, guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, appreciate the love. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button, hit that bell for notifications for every time we post. Uh, we got a lot coming up soon. We got some yeah. Star Wars reviews coming. Uh, Hopefully dive into uh, Lord of the Rings a little bit, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) It keeps throwing it at me. (laughs) I do, I do, I do. Well, we got uh, Rings of Power coming up uh, later this summer. So there's that. Um, Yeah. Uh, But other than that, um, 
we're here. I'm sorry, I just like lost my mind because it froze right when you had a big smile on your face, and I was very <laughs> distracted by it. <laughs> well, you were frozen too, so that's funny. <laughs> oh, awesome. Let's hope it recorded. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But what we might also try to do, if we got some time Thursday or Friday, maybe do a quick recap of the X-Men and Deadpool saga before you all go and see uh, Wolverine and Deadpool, Deadpool and Wolverine next week. I like it. So still a lot coming down the pipe, and we will see you guys on the next episode. Peace.